Hey, what's going on guys? Thanks for stopping by. Uh, just another update on the tank. Did a few things. Uh, most noticeable is I scraped off the black back glass. Um, now it just looks black and clean again, which is nice. Um, I had a bunch of spirit worms all over it, those little white specks that uh, many of you probably see in your tank. Didn't mind those, being that uh, from what I've read, they're filter feeders and they're okay as long as they're not causing any visible harm. You can just leave them there. However, it was the hair algae on the, the back that was starting to get crazy. As soon as I added that new rock, I noticed a bit, you know, plume of hair algae and it almost went away on, on the rock, but on the back glass it was getting more and more. And as I was dosing the Red Sea uh, Energy A&B, it... Uh, was getting out of hand so I since stopped dosing that scraped the back glass and I'm happy and the corals look happy so um, I think I'll discontinue using that product uh, for now anyways uh, I did have some sponges um, I in the in the sump uh, I didn't notice them in the display tank which is nice but uh, there was some uh, identified some pineapple sponges and this white uh, tube type of sponge that was down there which I have a not so great shot of, but I'll uh, put it up anyways. So um, I tore apart the sump and just gave it a good cleaning because uh, they were just spreading too fast. You know, as far as everything I've read, they're fine. You know, you don't need to get rid of them unless there's visible uh, harm being caused. However, they were just in the Cato and just mu multiplying like crazy in the sump. So I just can't stand looking at that stuff. I'm sure they'll pop up again. Um, however, I've since ripped everything out of the sump, scrubbed everything down, and uh, no sponges yet, but those uh, little white specks of the spear worms are, they come back quick and they spread quick. However, those by themselves, I wouldn't worry about. Uh, I did take the Kato out and clean that refugium and gave it a fresh water rinse just to get those sponges out. Of course in the process I lost the pods that I was breeding in there. Um, so I'll have to uh, just get another bottle in the future. And uh, I did find a couple of sponges in my overflow box, you know, in, in there. Uh, but again, I cleaned them. Unfortunately I didn't get footage of, of that, but I did get the pick I'll put up um, the uh, plating Montes I have you know uh, mentioned in my last video they were losing color and they, they have that uh, one in the center is barely green anymore however the red polyps are there and he's still doing well that that red one is uh, discolored as well is you know barely pink now but it does seem to be alive and doing well and, and, and this Monty he's okay and this one in the back, you only can see him from this angle, so give me a second. There he is. That, it, that one's on fire. I love that thing. You know, I can't wait till it just grows out and fills up back there so you, you can see it from the front. And everything else is doing well. The SPS, the LPS, uh, the anemone, they grow so fast. It's crazy. Then that one was the uh, one from the split, and it's just huge already. So I'm hoping the clowns figure it out, and hoping she lets them host in there, because it seems like the clowns themselves have picked a spot behind the rock, and they're hosting there. Um, the uh, fire shrimp still somewhere in there. The conch snail is still under the sand. You see him once in a blue moon pop up, uh, which is neat. Sarah's snails are under the sand. They just pop up randomly. They're doing good. Um, I did get rid of one of the uh, Antheus fish. He was a red fairy. It was a big one. He was getting aggressive during feeding time. So I put a fish trap in there. Left it in there for days. You put food in it every day. They get used to it. Come in. And um, you basically stand there and pull the trigger. And uh, it'll catch them. Gave that one away. Um, I almost got rid of the uh, yellowhead sleeper goby here, the sand sifter, just because he leaves uh, a fine dusting of, of sand in the water and uh, just spits it all over the corals on the rock. 
However, I, I did catch him but fumbling and trying to get the trap out of the tank. He escaped, and then I caught him a second time. But after that, uh, you know, the wife was voting to keep him, and I just didn't have the heart. He's the coolest fish. People love him, and, you know, he does a good job of keeping the sand clean. Um, to help with, there's still a little hair algae on the rocks. You know, I got that plume again when I added that the new rock in here. Um, so I am adding Microbacter 7. Why? It's just because I did it the first round and it worked for me. Well, no, you don't need to use it. I, I just am add some beneficial bacteria to help. And that's really it. So, uh, I'm gonna, thinking about what kind of fish to get next. I'm not too sure. Other, uh, you know, 10 chromis for schooling or, uh, you know, a few tangs. So, we'll see what happens. Thanks for stopping by, everyone. Until next time.